integrated circuit module is up first. And there's a couple of those. So I'll take these out. ADS1115, 16-bit I squared C interfaced, analog to digital converter, power supply ground, serial clock data, address configuration. I don't remember what alert is, and then four analog inputs. I have several of these already, but it never hurts to have more, so I bought two more. I did a video, I think think a couple of years ago on at least some of the features of these. I may have to reference that myself when I go to use them again, but as always it's good to have modules lying around in case something breaks, or if I want multiple projects simultaneously that each have to have multiple analog to digital converters, I can have an Arduino here, an ESP there, and they're doing something, talking to each other, and I need separate hardware. So, adding to what I've already got, here we have electronic components. Okay, luckily this tiny looking part has a label. Those are very small, even for surface mount. Bi-directional ESD protection dial. Oh, right. I wanted to put these around the USB data and even the 5 volt pin so that if there's ever any spikes or something on a project with a USB cable, this will help protect them. And they're not always needed. Some USB to serial chips have protection diodes built in, but for some reason I wanted these. At least now, I'm just going to keep these in this bag so they're labeled and I know I have them for the future. Oh, this seller labels everything. A hundred pieces each of 2N3904 and 3906 surface mount SOT23 transistors. USB protection diodes along with surface mount general purpose transistors. Maybe this was back in the days when I maybe had a USB interface with one of those ESP chips and using discrete transistors to switch the programming mode and run mode. So over USB it automatically detects to go into programming mode with the transistors. Yeah. Okay. Well, that project is long completed. I think I stole transistors off another PCB, but now I have more. And I do need both NPN and PNP coming up soon. I may be doing some discrete motor driver H-bridge stuff. So this is a good thing to have just opened. This is called Chip IC, but it's a rather large, bulky envelope for chip. Okay, socket. All right. Well, these are shrink wrapped rather tightly. Okay, these look the same. These look the same. I don't remember what I was looking for these for, although this board I just made with the MCP23017 GPIO expander, I believe that socket fits there. Yeah, that's the right socket for that chip, so maybe that's what I was looking for these for. Here's something I haven't received in a while. A plastic sheet. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's several things. i got to keep this separate. L293D. Motor driver chips. I'm going to be doing some stuff. I don't know if I'm going to use these immediately, but... I want to do some DC motor stuff, so it's good to have those. And I got through holes so I can use a breadboard just to experiment. Now there's a bunch of modules here. It's probably just as well to dump these all out at once and just see what I have. So these are the same. That's different. And these look the same. 16 channel analog multiplexer. So I see 16 output channels there, power ground enable, and there's four address select pins and a signal pin, and it is a 4067. 
So this chip has 16 single pull, single throw switches in it, and only one is turned on at a time, chosen by the 4-bit selection addresses. That signal will connect to just one of these other pins at a time. And you can use analog or digital signals there, so you can select from 16 sources, routing them down to one output, or you can take one input and route it to 16 outputs. I just thought that would be interesting to have on hand. You never know if you'll find a use for something like that. This one here is an 8-channel bi-directional level shifter. This can level shift both directions between 1.5 volts and 5 volts, and I just thought in some cases it may be better to have a dedicated chip solution like this than some of the other level shifters where it's just a FET configured in clever ways to achieve level translating. Sometimes a stronger push-pull circuit with an output enable is the better way to go. And this one is the SX1509 breakout board. That's a small chip. It runs at 3.3 volts, has an I2C interface, and I thought this one was interesting because it's a 16-channel GPIO expander, but it has some other dedicated features like an 8x8 keypad matrix interface, so you can use a bunch of push buttons, and it's got PWM LED drivers, so you can control brightness and you can blink or fade in and out, and it does have push-pull sourcing and syncing capabilities, but not as high current as we can get here on the MCP23017, where you can sync and source up to 25 milliamps absolute max per pin. These have different capabilities on the sync and the source side, so it all depends what you actually need. Maybe this will suffice in some ways. And being such a tiny chip, of course, unless you have it on a module like this, it's harder to prototype with on a breadboard. But this might have some good uses, so I thought I need one of these. And for this next item, I've always wanted to learn more about how to maintain a guitar, like when frets need to be replaced or filed down or cleaned up in some way, or even if a neck needs to be replaced and reattached to the body. I'd be reluctant to start learning with an existing guitar, so why not build my own and learn along the way? And then if I want to experiment with things, I'm not really risking much, just this kit. This one is a Strat copy, and at least in my area, when I look at prices for things, getting this kit and putting it together is still cheaper than buying a brand new low-end Strat copy. So I'd rather just get this and have the learning experience myself, including working with the wood to stain or paint it and then finish it, maybe with one of those brush-on polyurethane finishes. So. I think this is going to make an interesting project. Maybe I'll mess it all up, but even still, I'm still going to learn something. I have to sand and finish all of the wood. I have to see if this fits properly into the body and maybe sand it down to fit. I have to install most of the hardware, like the tuners up there. Who knows, if this goes okay, maybe I'll buy more kits, put them together. So this mailbag has a lot more things than I was expecting. I'm going to have uses for these chip sockets and transistors real soon. All of these modules, GPIO expanders and level shifters, can't go wrong stocking up on stuff like that. In the meantime, thanks Patreon supporters and channel supporters for making all this possible. Thanks for watching.